Jennifer Aceto and I own the workroom in the Fringe located in Havertown, Pennsylvania. And we have had a very um, recent community uh, request for homemade masks as a response to COVID-19. Uh, so what we're doing here is trying to uh, combine with other local seamstresses in the area to produce a basic uh, mask that can either be sewn in a workroom or at home. Um, just want to go over the materials that you would need and our research is showing that the best materials would be 100% cotton, tightly woven. So I am starting with a rectangle that is cut uh, 8 inches wide by 15 long and that's going to be folded in half later. Uh, you'll also need a quarter inch elastic or you could even use um, one eighth of an inch. I've also heard some people are using hair bands uh, which is like an elastic cording. Um, these strips would be cut uh, six and a half inches each and you'll need two of those. We're also putting a wire um, into the nose area and also along the lower edge um, and that's really been kind of a response or a, um, a request from the medical nurses and doctors who I've talked to. We've made a couple of prototypes so far and we're looking for feedback from those uh, professionals who are wearing these masks um, for a prolonged period of time each day. I've also seen people using things like twisty ties or uh, paper clips that are unfolded. So any kind of wire that you might have lying around the house uh, would work and I'm sure that many of you have your own suggestions too. We also are using uh, twill tape to finish the sides. So these are cut at, let's see, about five inches each and you need two pieces of twill tape for the sides. Uh, you can also, if you don't have twill tape or don't have access to it, you could always make your own bias binding. Um, and that is approximately one inch to one and a quarter inch binding. Uh, we've got a whole slew of patterns here that we cut out already. Um, however, I have gotten feedback from nurses that they really like to be able to bleach the masks in between shifts. So um, just going to show you quickly two of the masks that we did. This was actually uh, prototype number one. And this one is, it has, it has three pleats, uh, elastic side bands to wear over the ears, and then a pinchable twisty tie. And this one was done actually with two twisty ties. So if you have the perforated edges, you would just peel off two, leaving those two connected. And then we're sewing a little channel inside to keep that sturdy. And that seems to work really well. Otherwise, you can use any type of craft or landscape wire. I'm um, just going to talk a little bit about the tools that you're going to need for the project. I find this quilting uh, grid ruler very helpful when marking the, uh, the side um, markings. Uh, also, my wire cutter using a little um, pliers, uh, either needle nose or regular plier to just bend and round off the corners of the wire so that they're a little softer and hopefully won't poke through your fabric. Uh, I've got my scissors, my rolly marking pen, um, my twill tape, and pins if needed, but I find that um, as you get quicker with it, you really don't need to pin anything. So first I'm taking my 8 by 15 piece and I'm uh, placing it face side up. I'm just folding that right sides together and I'm going to give it a press and take it to my machine. So after folding your fabric in half with face sides together, we're just coming to the machine. We're making sure to back tack at our edges and we're stitching approximately a quarter of an inch across that top open edge and back tack at the end. So we just created a tube, we flipped it and I'm pressing it flat on my table. The next step is going to be marking our mask. So I'm coming up uh, one and a half inches from the bottom of my mask, marking a little bit on each side. From that point, 
I'm coming up another inch and making a mark on each side. That's my first pleat and then from there I want to come up a half an inch for the space making another mark. From there we have another inch up make a mark. That's our second pleat. Then we have half inch space and another one inch. Next we're just bringing our marks up, mark to mark, matching them, and pressing in place. You want to make sure that you leave your space and just do the pleat marks coming together. I like to press them in place. Uh, you don't have to. You could just do it at the machine. But this helps it to stay in place a little bit better when you get to the machine. Now I'm just going to baste my pleats in place. And do the other side. When you baste the pleats, it's important to remember to leave the top and bottom edges open. So you're really just stitching over the pleats themselves to hold them in place. Because you, the next step would be to put your wire in to the top and bottom edges. I've also, for this step, utilized or, or changed my foot on my machine to a zipper foot, or you can use a skinny foot, whatever works best for you. But you basically want to get that wire in there, and you're going to stitch along the edge so that you're creating a channel to sort of hold that wire in place. You may have to turn, depending on which type of foot you have, you may have to turn your mask around. So. I'm really just going to create a channel now, but I want to stitch from the outer edge so that that stitch goes all the way across the mask, even though my wire um, is stopped, I would say approximately a half inch in from the finished width of the mask. And it's up to you, um, depending on the type of wire that you're using, your channel might be a little bit more narrow or wider than somebody else's mask. And you're going to do that for the top and bottom of your mask. Okay, next step is to put your elastic on. And I have found that it's nice to give the elastic a little bit of an angle. So just putting the, the elastic into the corner of my mask, um, I'm going to stitch and back stitch a few times to secure that in place. One other thing that I want to mention here too is that um, by cutting your wire approximately a half inch short, that way you're not stitching into the wire and um, you know cause uh, possibly breaking machine needles or anything like that. So that's the reason for cutting that wire a little bit shorter than normal. So then you're just doing the same thing for the other side of the elastic. And if you don't have elastic or you run out of elastic, because what we're finding now is that uh, it's very difficult to get elastic. It's all out of stock or back ordered many weeks. Um, you can always use a twill tape tie, like we're going to finish the edge with twill tape, and you could literally extend that uh, twill tape to become a tie-on mask as opposed to an elastic mask. And we're just doing the same thing on the other side.
now we're going to encase that side raw edge and it's completely up to you if, if you want it to go much faster, if you have a number of masks to make and not a whole lot of time. You can always surge or overlock the side edges if you have access to that type of machine. If you don't, you can use a twill tape or a bias tape. And this one is just a one inch twill tape. I'm starting with a, a half inch fold at the end and just folding it over and I'm going to stitch through all layers. I, I do think that if you are creating your own bias tape, um, you probably can make it slightly wider to just make it a little easier to wrap that edge and just top stitch through every layer. And of course it depends too on the thickness of the fabric you're using for the mask. Uh, how wide that bias tape needs to be to wrap it well and to fully encase all raw edges. And there you go. Thank you so much for joining me and I hope that this video will inspire you and help you to join forces with us to do what we can to keep our healthcare professionals safe as they care for the rest of us in this difficult COVID-19 situation. Thank you.